Shalom family. So today, right before uh, everybody gets swept up in the whole eclipse thing tomorrow, I wanted to share something important with you, just to touch on really important. What makes Christianity different from other religions in the world? What If somebody asks me, if I encounter a Muslim or anyone from another faith and they say to me, so what makes you so different from ours? What is the big difference? Besides the fact that Jesus died and rose again, which is the absolute thing that none of them can do or have done or have proven, that our God conquered death and the grave. Besides that, ours is not a works-based religion. It is a relationship. I have an intimate relationship with a God who loves me and is invested in my well-being and my life. I am seeking to be more like him every day and he is guiding me and helping me. We are friends. And that is a shocking concept for someone, for example, from Islam. They, they can't wrap their heads around that one. It is not something they could understand. And that is the big difference. So if you go with me to Exodus 33, firstly, we'll start in verse 11. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to to his friend and he would return to the camp but his servant Joshua son of Nun a young man did not depart from the tabernacle and I'm going to pause there for a second and say to you the importance of the older generation the men and the women to be listening and seeking God's face and studying his word and living the life Jesus has told us to live and trying to be more like God Every day sets an example for the next generation and gives them something to see. Don't talk God or Jesus to your children and you're not living it. Don't try and tell them to read the Bible or seek the Lord. But you are the one who's sinning and you're doing everything that's wrong in your life daily by choice in front of them. Because you are showing them it's not a reality in your life. Moses knew the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses as a friend. They had that depth of relationship. And the young man did not depart from the tabernacle, the place of God, God's home, his dwelling place. Joshua, son of Nun, sought with desperation in his heart what he saw Moses had with the Most High God. He wanted what he saw in his mentor, Moses. He could see this is different to what all of these other so-called wise Israelites around me have and the things that they're aspiring to in their nation and their world. They are aspiring to other things. They're scared. They go hide when the presence of God arrives. But Joshua is at the tabernacle. He refuses to leave. He's hungry. Where did that hunger begin? In Moses demonstrating relationship with God. Now, if we continue to verse 12, then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you also have found grace in my sight. Now, we have found grace through Jesus Christ. His grace has come to us. Now, therefore, I pray. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way. The Hebrew word derech, God's way, the straight way, the way he would have me go. That I may know you, intimate relationship, and that I might find grace in your sight. To live in the sight of God, knowing every day, every moment is in the sight of God. And consider that this nation is your people. He's still, while he's talking to God about himself and what he seeks, he is interceding for the masses that he leads. That is a principle of leadership right there. Intercession and prayer for all of those, even those that you think doesn't need it or doesn't deserve it. We are interceding and praying for them because the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. God is powerful. And who would speak for them, especially when they know not? And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, 
I don't want any other promise in the world. Not riches, not fame, not anything, nothing. But this promise said to me, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I will not move anywhere. There's lots of places I'd rather be. I would love to be living by the sea right now again. I will not move to the sea. Even if I had the funds to move to the sea, if God did not clearly tell me to move to the sea, right? Because I won't go where his presence won't go with me. I won't go where he will not give me rest. I will stay in the will of God. If it be in the middle of a desert, I will live there humbly in the presence of my God, where he will feed me with water from a rock and give me rest because my soul and my hope is in him. And that is how you should be living. Verse 15, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Just like I said, why would I want to go anywhere if God Almighty does not go with me? It is not my desires and my will. It is the fact that where I am, there I am with the Most High God. He has my back. We are together. We are in intimate relationship. I am seeking His voice and He is giving me rest. You want to be anywhere else but that, that's on you. But I would rather rest under the wings of the Almighty. Because that's my safe space. I can face anything. I will march into the back door of hell. With a torch, no weapons, just my Bible, and I will march down the back door of hell and I will go straight down there and I will cause some trouble. Put some Jesus graffiti on the walls. Why? Because I will be doing it with the presence of God under the shadow of his wings, dressed in the full armor and assured of the promises of the most high king who is coming again and everything is underneath his feet. But it must be in the will of God and through his guidance. Now I want you to jump with me to the New Testament. John 15 verse 15. Jesus says this. From verse 14 actually. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. Intimate relationship. No longer. Do I call you servants? For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you these things I command you that you love one another. Now prosperity teachers will jump in here and say, this is where you give us all your money and God is going to give you 10 times more back and the BMW is going to be bought or the new Ford Ranger is coming. All these amazing things are coming to you as soon as you give your money to us. That's not what God's saying. If you are in relationship with the Most High God, you follow His commands, you seek His will, you seek His desires, you are doing His great commission, you are living for Him, your treasures are not on earth, they are in heaven, you are seeking the face of God, the power of God, the will of God, only God, not for yourself, not for your flesh, you seek that the Lord will say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Then you will be praying correctly when you pray because you will be praying for the lost. You will be praying for the hopeless. You will be praying for the needy. You will be praying for those that are seeking and crying out to God. You will not be praying for the new BMW or the rich bank account. God has full knowledge of what you need and he will provide your needs and if you don't trust that that you need to diarize and itemize what god needs to give to you you need to go and relook at the relationship between you and the most high god because you're missing the important point here it's all about 
Jesus, always and forevermore. So in the past, years back, when we really started searching for the rapture, when we thought this was it, and there were a lot of these dates gone by in the past, this is going to be it. I watched people go out, they even made YouTube videos. I'm having my favorite hamburger for the last time. Here I am, I'm eating it because we're leaving next week. I'm drinking my favorite milkshake. I'm going to my favorite spot and looking out at the sunset for the last time. I'm doing all these things, me, me, me. And back then we thought, oh, that's cute, nice idea. But the deeper we draw to the fount of the living waters of the Most High God, the closer we draw to His presence. Now that we're again having these high watch dates, and even now with this eclipse time period coming, Passover coming, and all these things happening in the world, the closer we get to we could exit at any moment, it is no longer or shouldn't be I need to have my favorite meal or get some sushi or do that favorite last sport. That No, it's we need to reach the lost. We need to show love to someone who needs Jesus. We need to leave a legacy for God that will persevere into the tribulation period. We need to pray for Israel and Jerusalem and the lost Jews and Palestinians. We need to cry out before God because when we're gone... What then? The Holy Spirit will work for sure. God is in charge. He's going to do amazing things in the tribulation that people are not even talking about. He will look after his own. But until I leave, I will be pouring out as much as I can for God and his kingdom. And that is what I desire for all of you to realize and do. Shake off the world. Shake off the evil shake off the darkness focus on the water walker he is in the field we are on the verge and that is why it is so important for us to be busy about his work we'll have lots of time to chill in the naughty corner and chat about all these things when we get up there but until then run that race even if you're running barefoot have an amazing day god bless and shalom